tech slides when rates rise, but both are falling in today's sell-off. What's going on here? Why the disconnect? Well, joining me now are Joanne Feeney, partner and portfolio manager at Advisors Capital Management and CNBC senior markets commentator Mike Santoli. Joanne, uh, start with you. How different is this from what we've seen both earlier in the week and what we saw on Friday? Well, you know, we have a couple things going on at the same time here today, and I think most of it uh, on the equity side is really related to the Omicron fears. And two things have happened. Number one, we still don't have information on how severe illness this particular variant causes and how effective the vaccines will be. But what we seem to be learning now is that it is much more contagious. And so that widens the degree of uncertainty about the consequences of Omicron, because if it is more severe in terms of illness, that makes things a lot worse. And while we might not expect a lot of lockdowns, it will drive people to stay home more just voluntarily. On the other side, if it's more mild and it spreads more quickly, that actually would be a good thing. And so I think what we're seeing is folks take some risk off the table, and that's driving both uh, bond prices up and it's driving uh, particularly risky equities down. But it's not happening everywhere in tech. Tech is certainly feeling the brunt of it. But notice that there are some really solid tech names out there still, like Broadcom, for example, Qualcomm holding up well. So you really have to pick and choose uh, where you want to be exposed for your clients at this point. Mike, interesting to me that we're still seeing some strong reactions to the upside and the positive. Dom mentioned Marvell Technology, for example. We saw uh, Snowflake uh, yesterday, I believe it was, as well. Sometimes when you get this negative sentiment, even the good news is reacted to as if it's not that good, but not necessarily the case here. What does that mean, if anything? No, you're right, John. I mean, well, what it does mean is that probably there's a higher threshold for investors to be pleased uh, by upside surprises. But, yeah, they still do get traction out there. I think what I'm seeing here is less in the NASDAQ a, a, a response to something macro as it is a rolling kind of valuation adjustment and loss of faith in some very, very highly valued presumed secular winners of the future. You saw a DocuSign, you saw Zoom, uh, you've seen a lot of these uh, names that basically they didn't do anything wrong. It's just that they were so heavily valued uh, and had such high momentum several months ago that you've had this long process of just kind of giving up the faith in that area. That's why it's also independent from what Treasury yields are doing. Yes, it has seemed at times this year on a day-to-day -day basis the incremental dollar when everybody was concerned about economic growth would flow toward defensive growth growth tech and into bonds and bring yields down. And that therefore seemed as if it was the yields causing the tech to go up. It was really just much more the, the way the rotations were orchestrated. Right now, I don't really think you're seeing that. Nobody quite believes we're going back into lockdown mode, that the pandemic favorites are all of a sudden they're going to burst back into favor. Uh, it's just a little more uh, uncertainty about when you want to bet on a uh, economic kind of reacceleration relative to, you know, what we've been seeing. So I think it's also about if you've been concentrated in these names that are imploding right now, you probably also own some Facebook. You probably also own some Apple. Everything kind of gets sold because you're in uh, you're in protection mode. Joanne, remember Reddit? Remember the time when we it, it was all or at least it seemed like it was all about momentum and fundamentals weren't necessarily a thing. I mean, I, I keep hearing how much retail trading is in this market, how much margin, uh, how much options activity. And it seems like if you got new retail, you've got people who aren't used to things falling that much. So given that, what do you do strategically as an investor here? Right. You know, this is the first time some of these retail investors have seen a serious risk in the market and, and pullbacks. And, you know, one thing that, you know, we advise our clients, you know, and they, they do get worried at times like this is, is to remember their goals. Right, staying long term. Um, and, and in fact, it can be an advantage right now because if the retailers are panicking, some of these really good secular growth stories are coming on uh, uh, not just a sale, but a major sale, um, you know, potentially once in, 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 a, in a year kind of sale. So the important thing is to look at the real economic progress that we're making. The jobs report was a little bit mixed, but really the important thing is to look at that million jobs added. Uh, from the household survey. The other one, the business survey, was a net number, right? And, and it's really reflective, I think, of the quits being so high. It's hard for employers to catch up to add people net uh, with all the quits that they're having. So the real economy is still chugging along in recovery. And even if Omicron you know, does prove to be more problematic, we're in a much better place than we were back in March of 2020 with the degree of vaccination that we have out there, even if it proves a bit less effective. So for the investor, Right. This is a time to really make sure to be exposed to good, solid, secular growth 
have some defensive positions, and still stick with some of those reopening plays, mm. because reopening will continue, even if it's a little bit bumpy over the next, you know, three to six months.